super psyched for today's session. Uh, this is Coach Austin and Sean together uh, at his place. And uh, we are gonna walk through uh, starts and turns with quite a bit of video content. So um, we're gonna go ahead and get started with um, a video of Ryan Hoffer from high school. I'm gonna let Austin set this up while I get it on the screen share. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so this, this video of Ryan Hoffer, I think is one of my favorite videos to share. And I think it's particularly special because this was done uh, as a junior in high school. Um, and this meet, uh, junior nationals happened to be in Texas and he broke the pool record, which is like, you think about Texas, like breaking a pool record for a high school swimmer is just might not ever happen again. So pretty in incredible. And um, what I love about it too is as a junior in high school, the, the calculation of his underwaters um, and the amount of strokes he takes is just amazing. Um, and I want you to specifically take a look at on every wall, he ends up being about two to three body lengths ahead. He's the last one that breaks the surface on every wall. So there he is up front. 100 freestyle, still underwater, still underwater, still underwater, breaks the surface right at 15. And I think these last two water, uh, underwaters are even more impressive. Everyone's breaking up. He's still underwater. There he is, popping up. At the 75, Ryan Hopper. Those seven strokes. Yeah. Point four. Yeah, it's on the table right there. Four. Corbin Ross. And here is Ryan Hopper. Yeah, I'm looking at the menu right now. 41-23 for Ryan So 41-23, just an incredible race. And I know second. that, that um, <laughs> winning for, by over two and a half seconds, just incredible. Last split, 10.8. Um, I know that he counted his underwater dolphin kicks on every wall to know how many underwaters he needed to take on each wall, make sure that he broke the surface before 15 meters. And I think it's just an absolute – Unbelievable example of underwater dolphin kick uh, uh, in the sport of swimming. And why I specifically appreciate it, too, is because he's just a junior in high school. Many of you are juniors, sophomores, seniors. And uh, so it feels like really real, really like chaseable, like really uh, opportunity um, for you to get to that point as well. So I would agree, having been um, at the meet at the time that this happened, uh, he, he was just so in tune and so dialed in um, in a way that his rehearsal of that race was just exceptional for his age and his ability. And I think that if any of you could draw something away from that, we started with that one on purpose. It's just, that's not anybody that's any older. I mean, he might have been a little bigger, but like he's not any older than any of you, well, maybe a couple of you. But he was in high school and really in a situation where that performance, 41-2, 100 free, uh, 16 or 17 is just, I mean, it's, it's, it's a really well-crafted race. So we're going to pick up next with uh, some Caleb Dressel starts. And uh, this is a sequence I'm going to let it play. Um, this is basically a series of starts, both at real time and at uh, slow motion, that I think will be a real nice starting point for uh, what we're going to talk about.
So just anybody want to anybody want to jump in on any observations they might have? Um, take yourself off mute and, and hop in. We're going to queue up some other videos, but anything stand out to you guys just watching those? Xavier, go ahead. I found something interesting. He when I when you look at his underwater kicks, he only does six or seven kicks off of every wall, which is pretty incredible. Just to like how fast he's going and how much did and or yeah how fast he's going with that little kick with so it's pretty well documented that he gets a little better distance per kick than most of his competitors do um and as uh the biomechanics guy from usa swimming said i think it probably infuriates a lot of the people that he that he competes against because they're working just as hard if not harder um to try to compete with him and they've got a scenario where he is just expending less energy going further with every kick and going faster all at the same time which is like a really lethal combination for somebody to compete against um so yeah i would agree with i would agree with that anybody any other um any other comments all right i'm gonna keep moving through uh he Caleb Dressel, and this is a little Dressel heavy. I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to be honest. There's a lot of things in the start and turn world that he's doing that is probably better than what other people have done. Um, Dressel uh, swam in high school with Joseph Schooling and Ryan Murphy and Santo Condarelli all at bowls at the same time. Um, they did a lot of start work together. So this is a really nice shot of uh, Dressel on the right and um, Schooling on the left. You can see very similar leaps where they really are extended and then the arm movement is a little different, but the end result is pretty similar. Um, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep moving because we've got, we got, we got quite a bit of video, but you can start to see the similarities that those two were taught by the same, the same person, um, which was Sergio. I'm going to show you another video that actually Sergio shared with me. Um, he, uh, this is Roland Schumann, who for probably eight, eight to 10 years had the best start in the world. So the, the, the unique part of his start is notice the angle where he makes contact with the water. He's at 36 degrees. And now watch how that angle changes. So some people, this is a unique feature to, to his particular start. And some people can really get away with this where they're just maximizing the amount of mass out of the water and above the surface to, to just continue to drive you down through the water. So the weight of his feet are the last thing that go in and he's just milking that, that potential momentum for everything that he can. Now, this, this probably doesn't work for every person, but this was a very <laughs> unique approach to how, um, how he was doing the start. Yeah, and, and Sean, would you say that like he has to make a pretty quick adjustment under the water to control the depth? Yeah, I wish I had an underwater shot of, um, of what he was doing underwater. Um, so this is, this is actually, uh, this video is from Sumita Champions. Uh, I shot this myself this past summer, um, so I'm gonna let you watch it in real time. Uh, Brad, Brad Tandy is on the left side, and Caleb Dressel's on the right. You'll see Tandy has a lot more arm motion, and it's a little less predictable. But let's take a look. I'll let you see the breakout, and then I'll slow it back down um, to actually their leap. So I, I don't know if you can see the, the cursor, but that's Dressel and Tandy right here. 
you're going to see Dressel's arm motion is a little more compact. You can look at Tandy's in the middle, and there's also a guy out in lane, looks like lane one or lane <laughs> eight, that's got a similar approach. Um, and I'm just freezing at key moments. Yeah. Um, they end up in the same place, but they certainly go through a very different progression to get through that. And this is all in the name of trying to maximize the momentum available to you from your arms. Um, so just looking at those two, I, I got a couple more, a couple more start videos. We're going to get into some, some women. Does anybody have questions based off of uh, what you just saw? I have one question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, you said that the angle that he was entering wouldn't be like achievable for everyone. So what is a desirable angle to enter? Um, well, that it's going to be individual, Anna, and it's going to be about where you can get the most momentum off of your leap. So your leaping ability is directly going to um, impact the, the angle of entry. So I'm going to go to some, some women that uh, maybe don't have quite the vertical leap uh, that Dressel does, but th this should be really uh, helpful and you'll see some different angles. So this is like all the way back to 2005. Um, this is Natalie Coughlin. So I really like this one because it's, it's pretty simple. Leads with her head, very similar to the other starts that you see. She pulls to generate the momentum with her arms, leads with her head, and then transfers into her legs and then recycles the motion with her arms so there's like three parts, arms, legs, arms, but it's a lot more basic. But you can see how important, how important it is, one, to lead, lead with your forehead. And I'm going to freeze, freeze frame probably right, uh, let's see, right there. That key position is the same position Dressel, Tandy, schooling, all of them had. And then great line of entry. You can see she's not as steep, but she does. Very similar to Skumon, if you watch her feet at the end, she's, she's got the exact same leg movement that you saw right on the very back end of her, um, right on the back end of the start. She's leaving her legs up to try to maximize uh, that, her momentum from that. Um, we're gonna keep moving. Next one is actually gonna be, it's gonna be Whitney Myers. Uh, Whitney was really, really strong collegiate swimmer and um, did pretty well internationally as well. Uh, but we are just looking at starts. So this is an excellent, you know, very similar view. Very great, look at her leg position. And you'll see this kind of pretty much across the board if you were to freeze frame any of them, that the shin is very parallel to the water and they're getting like just absolute maximum force off of their front foot. Um, Really nice angle of entry as well. Um, we'll get this a couple times. Very, very clean all the way through the toe point. Even just looking at the details of how cleanly and how she's getting through the water, how little water she's displacing. Um, just very, very efficient, low resistance movement. Um, so now I'm gonna take basically that image um, and I'm gonna play it against somebody who lifts their head off the block. And this is kind of the key, the key phrase of this, or the key moment in this video. Now, I know that anybody that's watched video, that you know who you are if you have a tendency to lift your head, but this is a really nice articulation of the pitfall of that movement. Um, all right. Any questions so far? Anybody else? I want this to be as interactive as possible. So if you have questions, please do not, um, you know, don't bite your tongue here. For the good of the group, um, asking questions is probably going to make this whole thing better. Uh, the next thing we're going to watch is uh, Simone Manuel. And this is a 50 free. We're going to watch it at real time. Uh, yep, yeah, this is probably good. 
especially for Kate Campbell. She was .80. You see Schweitzer right there has a solid start. But Kate Campbell, watch her start. She'll be in lane five. .80 was the 30th fastest of 30 swimmers. Campbell's youngest, younger sister, Bronte, is down there in lane eight. Oh. Again, terrible. I'm sorry, Dan. Point seven seven. That's almost like she just falls in the pool and has to play catch up the entire way now. I'll let you watch the whole fifty. It's only like twenty five seconds. Campbell and Manuel, and then you've got the two lanes above them. Too close to call here. Five different swimmers have a chance. All right. I'm gonna jump back to the start. Yeah, right here. Four swimmers. You can see very, very, very much similar movement um, in the way that she's approaching the start, leading with the forehead, really great leap, and then following through with her upper body. Um, so that's that's like some start video. Now I want to start to talk through um things that we can uh that, that you, maybe you can do to get better prepared for that um allison i know allison was on and she has a video that is supposed to be next allison hey. are, you, are you on i think i'm back <laughs> okay awesome <laughs> so right. this is uh well you queue it up I'll, I'll go ahead and talk through it um, oh yeah let me make sure i know i've been having technology problems no worries. So what we wanted to do next is to talk you through some things that you could do in dry land or things that um, you could do pre-race that would be really, uh, that would help you with, with the assimilating these skills and, and training for them, right? So these flying step jumps are the, uh, like one of the ways that Dressel uh, trains. And you'll see it's not that dissimilar to our step jumps, but he's got an arm motion that goes with it and he's got an incredible leaping ability. Um, are you um, ready? Uh, no, it's giving me trouble. Can you go to the next one and I'm gonna, I'll be right, okay. I'm gonna, okay. Okay, so yeah, Tucker, what's up? So I guess going back to the lifting your head on the start and keeping it down on the start, is the problem that, is it with keeping your shin parallel to the water, you're no longer doing that when you lift your head? I think it's your back position. I think it's your engagement. It's like, it, it's everything because you, when you contract your lower back to lift your head, it then changes how your hamstrings and everything work. Not to okay. mention the uh, just simple delay, yeah. you know, like your reaction time and your forward momentum in a well aligned position is going to be way more aggressive and you're more direct than if you're wasting time lifting your head and then bringing it back down. Okay. Um, Allison, are you ready? You want me to go ahead? Yeah, I think I, I believe it'll work this time. All right. So you go ahead and uh, yeah, beautiful. Can you see it? Okay. So yeah, yeah, go for it. All right. Let me make it bigger. Was twice good or we yeah, want to I think times. that's awesome. No, that's great. <laughs> I mean, and, and for everybody, in addition to just like his superhuman leaping ability, you can see how directly, I mean, the, the sequence is it's, it's firing one leg and it's following with his arms repetitively. So he's, he's creating that ability in, in, in dry land before he actually gets to um, before he actually gets to uh, the pool. Now, the second piece of this is every one of you probably knows that um, when you lift weights, round one never feels as good as like round two or the second or the third rep. Like you always feel better once you've activated. And those of you that have been experimented with lifting before a meet or a uh, um, have experienced some of those same things where you hit full power and then the next repetition is the one that's actually optimal. So I found this, this video, which is how Dressel preps for 
his events. So you all remember that the Phelps used to have like the three arm slaps. Well, this is how he's prepping to perform a start at, um, at the intensity and delivering, you know, what, what, I mean, delivering that kind of an effective start. I have got, uh, what do we got going on here? Hang on. No. Tech, minor technical difficulties. Let me get out of this and come back in. Sorry. Um, hmm. Um, let's get rid of this. Here we go. Why am I not? You just click on it. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, hang on. Patience. Here we go. So even in the moment at the meet pre-race uh, routine, he's doing things to make himself even more explosive. Like he's worked that into how he's going to go about, probably just from experience, he's learned that the, the second or third rep is gonna be more powerful than the first one. Um, so I think that that is, um, we're gonna transition into uh, a little bit of focus on the push off and then we're going to get into turns and just I'm gonna let Austin talk a little bit while I get some video queued up or actually Allison you're going to be oh no I'll do freestyle turns next so go ahead Austin oh yeah cool um so you've been taking a look at that uh the last stressful video that Allison showed where he's doing uh those those jumps um, you can see the alignment that he is uh, creating on the jump upward. And I think that's like an incredible aspect to think about uh, in and out of turns is what, what type of line are you holding? Are you holding a really clean straight line into your turn? And then are you quickly moving through the water, quickly going through that flip turn, and then coming out with really great alignment out? If you're pushing off and your hips are low or your hips are high or uh, your streamline's out of balance, there's going to be a lot of resistance under the water. So the, the, the best line that you can hold through the top of your fingers down the uh, bottom of your toes is what you're really looking for on a push off. And you can apply that uh, to how you're entering the water as well. I think that alignment is important. You can apply that to uh, how you're pushing off a wall in an open turn to a flip turn on your back. Um, so I think alignment is, is very important. Um, and then you're, you're thinking about the angle of your push off. And I think that's uh, sometimes can be relative. You think about uh, pushing off uh, for a 50 free where you want to go 15 meters under the water, you might push off at a little bit of a deeper angle. If you're in a distance event and you're popping up a little bit earlier, your, uh, um, your angle off the push off might be a little bit uh, closer to the surface. So um, thinking about having control over the angle of your push off, depending on the event to the event. Um, and then, uh, of course, focusing on the force of your push off. And that's something that all of you can work on right now through the dry land exercises. Um, we're doing a lot of streamline jumps, even jump, you think about jump shrugs, you think about squats, there's so much jumping movement um, that many of you are doing. That, that type of movement is uh, so correlates so well to uh, push offs and starts and you can really spend a lot of time strengthening um, that that area and it might even be cool to do a little bit of tracking of your vertical jump or your forward jump over this break and see if you're actually improving that distance uh, vertically or uh, or forward um, and I think that would be a fun tracking and opportunity to see hey I'm, I'm improving in this skill and I'm going to get back into the water and be that much better um, and then lastly is just like your breath control of course like being able to have um, the race plan in mind of how many underwaters I want to do off each wall will definitely help you in preparation of like 
how you're managing your breath control over uh, a, a race. And of course, in short course, you're gonna have to really manage that breath control um, a lot more. So uh, just thinking about all those aspects, there's a lot that goes into a turn uh, in and out. Awesome, so now I'm gonna share a video from the race club um, that talks a little bit about common mistakes on flip turns. Um, turn itself, we, we usually see three different problems. The first problem is that the swimmer doesn't tuck their knees and their legs tight enough to their chest, so they make a big ball, and the big ball takes too long to get over the top. If you can make your ball tight, you're going to get your legs over much faster. The second problem we see is that swimmers tend to try to rotate as they're turning, so their feet will go angled one way or the other, when really you want to get them to the wall as fast as possible, and the fastest way to do that is to keep the feet square and have the toes pointed straight up when they hit the wall, going straight over the top. The way we practice those is we do that with an underwater drill. We put a weight belt on, we put ankle weights around the ankles, and we have them actually do the entire turn underwater. Why do we do that? First of all, it makes them appreciate the drag factors. When their feet or their legs are out wide, it takes forever to get them around. When they tuck them up tight, they feel how much faster than they can get them over. It also makes them appreciate how much core strength it takes to get those legs over the top and into the wall. And if they lift their head up, they also underwater realize it takes more strength than if they keep their head down. The third problem we encounter is that when the person flips their turn and they pull back with their arms underwater, they continue pulling until their arms are in this position. Now their feet are on the wall and they're in this position, what are they gonna do? They're either gonna wait and get into a streamlined position or they're gonna push off the wall and get into that position as they're moving. And either way they lose. So what do we do? We teach that by having them pull back with a straight arm, not bending the elbow, holding the hands close together as far away from their head as possible and have them freeze when they hit the wall. If their arms are in that position, then they're good. If they're here, they're not. So from this point, once they hit the wall, it's very easy to get into a very streamlined position very quickly. That will save them a tenth or two on every turn. Okay, so nice little overview um, of, of some basic things. We're gonna move right into uh, some more video. And again, this, this is, a uh, Dressel flip turn. Um, we got a couple of other shots, but I think that this is a real nice high speed uh, version of what he just talked about and it'll loop through quite a few times. You can notice his angle of push off coming off of um, off the wall. He's preparing to go underwater. Um, really, really quick reaction. If you look at his rib cage and his alignment as he goes, as he reacts to the wall, you see pretty much everything that was just explained, but being delivered by one of the most powerful people that is in our sport. Um, so uh, we got a we got a question. Uh, I do not, uh, Xavier, I don't have any of Phelps's turns. Uh, I'm sorry, but I will take questions uh, at this point. If anybody else has a question, this is a, this is a good point if you want to raise your hand or if you want to hop in. Kate, go ahead. Okay. Um, so this is kind of relating back to like what Austin said earlier as he was talking about like power and like generating a lot of power and I was wondering like exactly what part of like your foot or whatever are you generating like the most power from because like um like for like a turn and a start because like when you do squats you kind of like mainly focus on being on your heels so like you're using your glutes but when you're jumping like are you using like the same part or like what exactly are you generating like all the power from um yeah I mean I I really feel like um in an explosive jump you're you're putting a lot of weight on the tops of your feet. Um, and yeah, I think 
you're right about a squat and trying to create balance within the whole foot. So having equal weight from the heels to the feet um, and not really having any shift around. But then when you're getting into like a streamlined jump, you're, you are thinking about like the flexion of your foot and then that producing uh, like that last little spring um, and the jump. And then also thinking about um, uh, your Achilles heel, I guess, like produces a lot of power and snap in the way that you jump. And I remember that reading in this, uh, the sports gene book where this uh, individual had this abnormally long Achilles heel and his ability to jump with no training or practice was way higher than anybody else. Um, so then you're thinking about to the spring of and, and your ankle as well and, and producing that, that speed and power. Okay, is that the same for like a flip turn? I believe so. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's a, co it's a combination, which is why the squat can't be done by itself. It's gotta be done with, with jumping. Um, I'm gonna move on, Claire, we got, uh, you go ahead. Okay, so other than like squat jumps and like those leg switch things, um, is there any way to work on like starts and turns without the use of a pool? Like, is are there any like workouts that specifically enhance? Well, so we're 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 getting into that. We actually did not get to a video that we had talked about, which is um, doing a, a like like a plyometric movement where you like step off of like a chair or a table react to the ground and jump up. If that makes sense, you're coming, mm -hmm. you're, you're like stepping off of something, maybe a foot off the ground, and then you're training yourself to react. Um, I think that I might have a video of, of me doing something that just for your amusement later that might help. But um, I, I really do think that the introduction of plyometrics and the jump shrugs and other things that where you're just really focused on the reaction, is really how to tie together the strength right now, which is a really good question. Sebastian? Uh, yeah, so following up on Kate's question a little bit, uh, where should you place your feet on the wall in order to get the most power uh, in a flip turn? I, I believe directly under your hips. Um, and when you, what I would say is, uh, spend a little bit of time and it could be a little bit individual. I'd say under the hips is like a really good, uh, like general area, but I'd spend some time, uh, like potentially even when you're testing your vertical jump, do a jump where your feet are a little bit wider outside of shoulder length, do a jump where, uh, your feet are at shoulder length, do a jump where your feet are where your hips are standing and kind of get a sense for yourself. I think and in some, in some ways we all have different anatomy um, and there's a little bit of uh, movement um, in that, but I think that uh, where uh, you can be most centered in your body weight, like right under your hips uh, is generally best. And I went back to this so you could see you know, point of, point of contact um, to let you really see how that looks and what he's, he's actually getting most of his foot on the wall at some, I mean, he's landing and using his calf as a, as a springboard. Um, so, okay, um, nice, good questions. Uh, anybody else got a question right now? Okay, uh, Garrett, go for it. So I noticed when Dressel does his turn, before he actually does the turn, he kind of his head bobs up and then he goes down. But some people, like you watch Ryan Murphy's backstroke turn, goes straight, just straight down and submerges the head. Which is better and why? Um, I don't think that the Dressel, Dressel is lifting his head significantly. Mm -hmm. um, I, re I really don't. I think that that's like a very, very, very minor movement. I'm going to go back and we're going to look at it together. Um, I do think that on backstroke, uh, everyone tends to lean in a little bit more than they do on freestyle. And um, I'm going to, we're going to let this come through. There's very minor movement. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, I, that's very keen eye for you to pick up on that. But when you're on, when you're on, uh, when you're doing backstroke, there's a natural scenario where as you rotate through the roll stroke that you lean in and it's not just like, Lochte, it was Pearsall, it's Ryan Murphy, it's Tyler Clary, every, and the girls too, every, every backstroker is leaning in a little bit further as they go through that rotation um, to get themselves into alignment to take that freestyle stroke. 
So I, I wouldn't get caught up on that. There was a little bit of a lift and I noticed that before I used the clip, but I don't, I don't think that's like a big takeaway from, from this. I, I, he's leaning in. If you notice the back of his head was slightly underwater. So keep that as your key point. He's not looking up at the wall. He might've lifted just a little bit, but his eyes are down and he's leaning in with a neutral spine line. Um, Okay, so uh, we're at 4.35. I'm gonna go ahead and go to, um, Allison, if you got the, I'm gonna skip ahead just a little bit to, uh, I'm gonna skip the slow-mo backstroke turn for the girls. Um, you want me to go into the Denison? Nope, nope, I'm gonna show two, the, two, um, Cog okay. the 2008 videos. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna skip the one. So you guys, this, this is like, I feel so privileged to even have this video, but this is some, some video that USA Swimming shot at the 2008 Olympic trials. And um, this is just the most amazing presentation of underwater dolphin kick and like your line in a race. I was in the building when this happened. Um, and this is such a crazy story. So Coglin's in the middle, she's in the lead right now. Just above her is Haley McGregory, and just above her is Margaret Holzer. And this is finals. In prelims, Haley McGregory broke the world record. And in the next prelim heat, Coughlin broke it right back. Uh, stop for a minute, watch how effective this turn is. This is one of the very best turns I've ever seen. I mean, she changed, even in a long course pool, she completely changed the race with the one turn that was available to her. She was setting it up, ready for it. And then when the moment came, she just nailed it. And Holzer ends up uh, touching out Haley McGregory. Haley McGregory broke the world record in this meet and didn't even make the Olympic team. So what's super cool about this is I also have the underwater video of the exact same race that I'm gonna show right now. So you can see, just see a little bit different um, presentation of exactly what you just saw, but from underwater. So you can see her undulation, how deep she is, and really great undulation uh, on the underwater. You, I don't wanna get too much into backstroke because that's not really um, what we're into here as far as this talk, but you will, it's a little faded out on the, on the um, on the turn here, but just because they only have one camera, but you're gonna see the depth of her push off and the intensity of the motion all the way through the end of the kick out. That's the part where I'm just like blown away. She's just fighting for every single kick with full force. And it really is a game changer on this whole race. Without that winning the turn by that much, she does not, she doesn't win. Um, so I just thought that it was really cool that I had both the above and below water shots. And you can see how important just the start and the turn are, even in a long course hundred, that she basically, without those two weapons, she's not, she's not in the game. She might not even be in the A final. Um, so I just thought that was a really, really cool shot of how impactful start and turns can be, even in long course at the very top level you have to have those skills. Um, okay, we're gonna move into open turns. So Allison, yeah, you are up. Now this is, uh, this is about a four minute clip, I think, of Dave Dennison um, from Go Swim doing, talking through and really, really good video of open turns. Um, go ahead, whenever you're ready, Al. Okay. As you watch Dave go through a series of turns, get an image in your head of how compact, how tight, how smooth, and how continuous the movement is. There's no stopping or jerking. Dave touches the wall, rotates instantly, and is off again in one continuous movement. His secret is a tight, quick tuck, and he practices it every day. 
here's a drill that Dave uses that you can use too to help improve your turning speed. Start by lying face down and flat in the middle of the pool. If you're comfortable, draw your knees and feet up to your chest as quickly as possible. Get your body into the smallest possible ball and allow your body to rotate and roll. Notice how tight Dave is. Also notice how he draws back his chest, head, and shoulders. From the surface, we get a better idea of the head and shoulders being drawn back. Next, move this drill to the wall. Approach the wall as you would for a normal turn. Then simply tuck into a ball and allow your body to roll backwards. Let's watch again. Start in a laid out position. Tuck your legs up and rotate backwards in a tight ball. The tighter the tuck, the quicker the rotation. Notice that Dave stays tight all the way through his rotation, and it isn't until now that he needs to use his hands just to help him place his feet on the wall. Once you've mastered this drill, simply go back to our original turn sequence. One, eyes down on the approach. Two, tight, fast tuck. Three, Karate style elbow. Four, roll back. Five, plant your feet and prepare for the drive. A great push off. Gradually reduce the amount of hesitation, making a smooth and more continuous flow in your turn. You might wonder how you're going to breathe if you keep your eyes down and roll in a tight ball. This series of still shots will show you that Dave is still able to catch his breath while keeping his eyes down and his body tucked. The eyes stay down, allowing the body to fall quicker. As he falls back, a little gap is created so that he's able to catch his breath. As with any advanced technique in swimming, this takes practice. But when you do it correctly, you'll see how much faster it can be. And you'll still get your air. At no point does Dave have to lift his head and look skyward to breathe. Try this for yourself. Experiment until you can turn in one smooth, fast, and continuous movement. The karate moves. Karate, karate elbow, I love it. So, didn't, look, um, didn't he swim at Auburn? He did. He did Shout swim at Auburn. Shout out to Jenna. <laughs> he, he also he also swam here in Colorado in high school. He's the head coach at the University of Wyoming. Um, he actually was in a sledding accident and is in a wheelchair now. But um, I've just always thought that that particular video was such a great representation of the tuck and the movement. Um, so here, this is this is for um, amusement's sake. Hello, this is Coach uh, Johnson. Uh, this is a dry land video that I shot, which, you know, this is like comic relief of things that you can do right now to work on how your ankles, if you notice the ankle angles, his ankles were always in a situation where they were at the lowest resistance possible, but they were very, clearly articulated within the turn. So um, again, we've gone from world-class athletes to Coach Sean. Um, <laughs> University of Denver Hilltoppers performing an open turn ankle flexion drill, really working the degree of movement in your ankles and how it can assist your rotational speed within an open turn. 
Okay, so that's enough of that. Um, but I think you can see that a lot of you probably rotate through the turn with your ankle like a hammer. You never think about what, whether or not you're tucking it and pulling it back up underneath or whether or not you're trying to lower your resistance within. It's such a detail that I think that it um, easily gets lost in the, the whole of the turn. Uh, just going back to the Denison too, not lifting. Those of you that uh, rely on the gutter, you can see how unreliant he is on a gutter. He's just able to generate the rotation from the platform of his body position. Um, so what I wanna go from there to is a video of Kevin Cordes swimming the 200, 200 breast at NCAAs in 2013. Now, quick prep on this race. He, at the time, I think the American record was a 151. Um, and you're gonna see, he's a low stroke count, breaststroke swimmer. Um, his turns are not as clean as Denison's, but the push off strength that is involved in what he is doing is, is a game changer. He took the American record from a 151 to a 148 in one day. And I want you to watch how great the underwaters are and how forceful he is. It completely changes the outcome of the race. So here we go. Uh, So uh, that was a 148, 200 breaststroke, just so y'all got like a good grip, <laughs> grip on what he did. Uh, you want to add anything to that? Uh, I don't know. I just, I, in the crowd, there was once that somebody was like, 148, six, what? <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, if you look back at that race, the amazing thing too is I think he's at a four cycle stroke count all the way through until the last 50 or last 25. So another like moment of like calculation that wasn't just by like natural stance. Like he definitely 
uh, worked with his coach, worked with uh, his race plan and calculated, I want to take only this amount of cycles uh, all the way through the race and probably stretched out his underwater pullouts and worked on that skill to allow for him to uh, build that calculation. A hundred percent. And the lung, the lung control that it takes to be ready to do that and to be 12 yards on a pullout every single wall for a tuna breaststroke, especially short course is, is pretty incredible. Um, so that a lot of the things that we've already talked about, alignment, angle of push-off, breath control, the force of the push-off, those all came into play in that race. So I think we want to wrap this up. Well, does anybody have any questions? Because we got, we got one more video, and I was trying to keep this at under an hour. Um, I, I, hopefully, this amount of really high-quality video has been engaging. Anybody, anybody got any questions at this point? We got one more race. Okay. We are going to finish. Uh, Garrett, go for it. Um, I know it's probably more difficult because we're not in the pool and we're not in a natural environment. We have to hold our breath, but is there a way to advance our breath control outside of the pool? It's mm. a really good question. That, I, I mean, I've, uh, I've often told people who don't swim that like people who just run, I, I'm like, okay, I'm going to explain to you how hard swimming is. Imagine you were running and every eight seconds to 10 seconds, you had to hold your breath for five to six seconds. Think about that for a second. It's one of the most unique skills that any sport demands. And there's actually, the, um, Heidi, the, the pentathlete that trains with us, she has to run and then shoot. And she has to hold her breath while she shoots. And it's one of the only things that I know of that's very, that's similar to what swimming does? That's a great, that's a great question. I don't know that um, I have a great answer uh, because swimming is so unique in its demand. When you're at peak effort level, peak heart rate, peak respiration, hold your breath. Now repeat. That is so unique to the sport that, I, I mean, it's a really good question. I'm gonna think about it, Garrett, and see if I can come up with a, a better answer than one I just, just, just gave you. Anybody else? Thank you. Okay, we're gonna finish with Caleb Dressel's 200 IM. Um, at the time that he did this swim, I don't believe anybody had been under 140. And he's gonna go 138.1 here. And I think that this probably weaves together all of the things that we talked about today, which is um, the start, turns, open turns, flip turns, the alignment, underwaters, uh, I think that this is a really great lead in. Uh, we're hoping to continue these forward. Uh, but I think that this really lends itself to like underwaters and talking about that as probably the starting point on our next talk. Uh, but this is uh, Caleb Dressel's American record uh, 200 IM uh, from I think two years ago. Here we go. with the two fastest times in the nation this year. Caleb Dressel in lane four is out in 21.03 under American and NCAA record pace. The NCAA and American record split at 100 is 45.99. Caleb Dressel at 46.04. He is five one hundredths above record pace. The record split at 150 is 115.20. Caleb Dressel of Florida. <laughs> is 28-3 with five strokes on both laps. The record is 139-38. Caleb Russell 
So, look, I, I mean, that one race weaves together every detail you could possibly have in the sport, all strokes. Breaststroke's his weakest stroke, and he did two five-stroke lengths and went 28-3 in the middle of his 200 IM, and that's his weakness. So, I mean, the lung capacity to be prepared to be underwater at that point in the race uh, I mean, it's just an, that one race is one of the most unbelievable short course swims uh, I've ever seen just because it requires so many different skills. Um, you want to add anything to it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just uh, another cool moment of, of calculation and kind of just amazing. As, as Sean mentioned, five cycles and breaststroke. I think butterfly was about the same four to five cycles backstroke. I bet it was the same as well. Um, he's underwater for more than half the lap. He really only swam 100 IM in that race, like physically swam upper body on top of the surface 100 IM and was under the water for the rest. So pretty, pretty incredible. Anybody have any questions? I hope that, I mean, now, now's the time because we're about to wrap this up. Um, our goal with this is again, to bring you a whole new library of video um that that demonstrates the things that we've talked about i mean you saw some familiarities with pioneer turns and the backstroke uh or the breaststroke flip in the middle of the pool this is this is the resources that we've drawn some of the drills from but hopefully seeing re repetitiously seeing really high level skill performance uh one I, it just feels good to watch really fast swimming right now and uh i just because we're not at the pool very much. Um, but to give you like a different resource to be able to come back and watch those things um, on your own. I mean, we're going to put the recording of, of each one of these that we do up so that you can go back and look through the different skills um, and keep that stuff up even past the time that we're back in the water. Because I think that a lot of these things like you might be really keen in on it now. I think the key is, is Let's educate ourselves. Let's get let's get it right up here, and then let's carry that through when we can get back in. And I th I think real quick, let's open it up to um, to you guys. You guys know our dryland program really well. We're sending you guys out dryland. Why don't some of you tell us like what dryland exercises specifically you think would uh, benefit your strength and uh, and allow for you to build strength in these areas? There's several that come to mind and in my mind. Anybody want to share now? Um, I can share. Yeah, go for it. Um, I've really been liking, especially with push off and just power, like when we watched the video of Caleb Dressel and just looking at the jumps that he got even before he was in the water. Um, I've really liked uh, doing just even a small amount of streamlined jumps, even if it's like three or four, um, and then going into like swimmer pulls or even pull ups. Um, and I think that combination combined really allows for like a perfect workout for a swimmer specifically. Yeah, I think it's great. Anybody else? I think one that comes to mind to me a little bit too is burpee jump shrugs. You think about the core strength that you need when you're coming down into that push up position and then lifting back up and then setting back into that position that you'd push off the wall and then coming up with weight and thinking about under the water, there's resistance. It's not the same when you're doing a push off under the water than when you're doing a push off like uh, in air, like on land. So having a little bit of weight uh, as well, I think sort of like encompasses the, the little bit of resistance that you're experiencing under the water. And to echo that, think about the burpee jump shrug. You're going from here, you're coiling, and then you're going to here and you're coiling and you're going to here, which is very similar to what you're doing when you're turning, is you're going from a position here, you're turning and you're coming back out. So the, the complexity of the shift of your body position in the middle of it also correlates to how the motor skills are gonna have to work when you're doing it, when you're actually doing a turn. So I would echo that as like probably one of the best things you could do to create explosiveness. Anybody else while well, we're all here together for the good of the group? Jenna. 
Uh, Jenna? Well, I know that we're doing um, jumping jacks in the leg circuit now, but in the old leg circuit, when we would do those, um, like, step up things on, like, the thing, if you added up uh, the arms to it, mm -hmm. like what Caleb Dressel was doing, that would work. Yeah, I had not seen those, um, this, this thing that Allison found. We, we all did our own research, and she brought this up. Oh, I can promise you, you will see flying step jumps in your future uh, at, at, the, at the University of Denver. The, that exercise is so directly relatable to a one leg followed by the arm, and you can do it right now. You can start doing sets of flying step jumps, but we didn't wanna, we wanna show you what's going on before we start writing it into workout. But now you can go back, you can reference it within this video, you can look for it, but yeah, flying step jumps, that's what they're called, you will see them next week. Any other questions? All right, we are right at five o'clock. Our, again, our hope is that we're gonna, we're gonna change the topic, but continue this series over, over the next six weeks um, and try to work through uh, a number of uh, different technical presentations and try not to repeat stuff. So um, thanks for joining. Uh, we have Sports Psych tomorrow. Be well. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Austin. Thanks, Allison. Thank you. Thank you.